All right. Welcome to the Ethereum Improvement Proposals Improvement Process Meeting 47, EIPIP Meeting 47. We have agenda shared and uh, the first item listed here is uh, EIP's repository spam. Um, we briefly discussed this concern in the last meeting and uh, Micah pointed out uh, it's a concern and how it can be addressed. It was also brought up by Sam Wilson in the ETH R&D Discord and uh, the last message from Micah on EC Discord suggested to be added to EIP IP meeting and to be discussed. So Micah, if you would like to briefly talk sure. about the issue. So uh, the I realized the other day that the majority of my time doing EIP editing is actually just dealing with uh, like administrative stuff, like reporting spammers and closing tickets that they create and closing, deleting comments when they leave them. This is a job that I think pretty much anyone could do. Like it doesn't, it's not terribly hard to learn to identify the spam. They're, the spammers are not particularly ingenious. They seem to be in a hurry. Their accounts are very obvious. And so it's, it's a relatively simple process to just go through and delete their message if possible, uh, close their issue if they opened it, close their PR if they opened it, leave it leave a comment if there's confusion by actual editors or authors about the, the spammers and then report them to GitHub. And uh, I think if someone was doing that along with a couple other like little administrative tasks like categorizing, like putting labels on things or mentioning people as needed, like mentioning appropriate people, I could in theory uh, unsubscribe from the uh, EIP's repository and just get the mentions at that point, which would lower the burden greatly. And lowering the burden is a, of MICA is a good thing because it makes it more likely MICA will stick around for a long time. And so if we can find someone to fill that role, perhaps someone who's interested in getting involved in the process, but doesn't have like the deep technical background to do like uh, the, the editing itself, uh, that might be a good opportunity for somebody. That make total sense. Um, just wondering if we have anyone from the present meeting who would be interested because my understanding is this uh, role can be done by someone who is having uh, access to delete messages and report. Yeah, so the, the hardest part is finding someone that is trusted enough to do this. Um, trust being hard to come by on the internet. Uh, if we can solve that problem, then I feel like we just need to find someone who's interested and meets that trust requirement. So, I'm audible. Hello. Yeah. 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 So, what we can do is that maybe not directly trust someone, just assign someone to figure out what these spam issues or PRs are, and then tag someone who can actually delete it, and then see how how active they are and depending on that, maybe we can give them an access or something like that. Does that make sense? I f if that's fine, I guess. Then... Yes, I'm, I'm trying to think of how much. Yeah, that would, that would probably help. I mean, again, that would get, to the, get us to the point where we at least can, um, like the, the editors themselves can actually stop unsubscribe from the IPs repo, which would be really nice. Yes, yes because the, the repository is very spammy. And a lot of it is stuff that the editors don't actually need to respond to. It's just people like updating their own PRs and whatnot. And you mm -hmm. just get, you know, you get a notification every time. And it's, uh, if we just had one person whose job was to kind of go through all of that and then mention people as necessary. And that can include, you're right, it can include mentioning someone to say, hey, spammer, please delete. Yeah, I've been, I've been kind of doing that for the past week. Tagging Pooja, you or maybe Light, uh, sorry, Matt, sometimes uh, if I find a spam comment. Um, uh, what you can also do is maybe, you know, just tag maybe you, Pooja, or Matt. And at the end of the week, you can take up that responsibility and delete those because you should, you might not, it not be effective for you to spend uh, time daily deleting these uh, issues or PRs, right? Because they are spam by default and they require as as much less attention as it is needed by the EIP editors. So it can be done at the end of the week or maybe end of the month, whatever, or like a fortnight one, whatever works for you. Good first step, maybe. I mean, realistically, I'll probably delete them as soon as I notice the 
dimension, which is fine <laughs> with me. Um, I'm trying to find a good example. I wanted to, uh, one second. Let me see if I can find a, uh, the IPs. I want to do a screen share and just show you guys what the process is um, for the reporting and how to identify them. Um, anyone happen to know recent spammer? There's a Lucid 36 guy. Uh, yeah, OK. Let me pull this up and share. You guys see that? And is the thing you yeah. see a uh, GitHub? <laughs> it is GitHub. Excellent. That was close. OK, uh, so um, this guy, for example. So my usual process is, so right off the bat, they almost never fill anything in here. If they do some, fill something in for the, the the description or their comment, it'll be like just like a link to somewhere else or another EIP. Or sometimes they get particularly clever and they copy and paste someone else's submission. And so you do have to look out for those. Like, um, but if you go and click on the user Lucid Thirty Six here, so one of the indicators is is their new account. So this account is actually older than most. A lot of them, there's like they just started committing this week. So these this green heat map here will always be shifted to the right for spam accounts. Um, if you if you're not sure, you can also look through their activity, and you'll notice a, a couple of things that are odd. Um, one, like they'll contribute to a lot of Ethereum and cryptocurrency related things, and if you click through on their or look at what they do. They just do like spam pull request approvals or reviews. For example, like this guy just reviewed, you know, from twelve or six different Ethereum or cryptocurrency related things. They just did a bunch of reviews in a day. Um, they will also, you know, if you again just dig through, um, you'll see they re create a lot of repositories. Um, again, this is a fairly abnormal for a real human to create. Massive repositories, not, not always. These are just each one of these is like another little red flag that you can look out for. And then if you really want to check, you can look for if they posted an issue or a commit or a PR, and you'll probably notice that they look like the same thing that um, they they posted in the Ethereum EIPs, like this. Like this person is just posting addresses or hashes or something in the My Ether Wallet repository. I think this is obviously. This person and then their their friend here are just spamming. So anyway, so I do a quick glance. This usually takes, you know, I only spend, I don't know, 30 seconds or so on it. After you've done a few of these, you start to notice the pattern. And then click this block or report button here. Actually, I take that back. Then after verifying, go back to this page. If it is a comment or a new PR or a new issue, you can click the dot, 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 and report content here in this dropdown. And that'll take you over to GitHub's report feature. And there you go. Okay. And so you just go down. I'd like to, I want to report abusive content or behavior. I want to report spam or user dis is disrupting my me or my organization's experience on GitHub. And this user disrupting my organization's experience on GitHub. And then down here, you have to type words or else it will fail. And so uh, spam. Issue creation, or I think it's PR creation, pull request creation, something like that. Hit send. And then finally, so that'll go off to GitHub. And then finally, you go back to the PR in question and close it if it was opened. Or in this case, if you don't have the ability to close, just mention Micah and say, hey, it's the spam. Please close it. And that's it. Then move on to the next one. Um, we get maybe five to 10 a day of these, I think. This is off the top of my head. Maybe that's way off. I don't know. But it feels like five or 10 a day. Um, and they're just tedious. Like It's one of those things that you see a notification in your email that just is annoying. And um, there's two other problems. If they do the spam PR review, so a lot of people, these, these same spammers will just go through and those review a bunch of PRs. And they'll say approved or reviewed or comment or whatever. Um, and this has two problems. One, it's confusing to authors, because authors think, oh, someone reviewed my PR, but this person did not review their PR. They just are spamming the repo with approvals. 
The second issue is you, there's no dot, dot, dot next to approvals, only on comments. And so as you can see on this line, there's no like dot, dot, dot report. So this is where you have to actually open them up, go into their account, and then you click block a report on the left and then report abuse here. And that takes you back to the same page. The last and final problem is, and this, the irony here bugs me, um, GitHub will only yet let you report people at a certain rate. And then you get rate limited for reporting people and they tell you to stop. <laughs> and so if you have a spammer that has two accounts, he can outpace your one account that is reporting them. And so you have to go create a like second account just so you can keep up and report all of them. I've only run into this usually if I fall behind. The spammers aren't that bad that they get to the point where I get rate limited. But GitHub does rate limit you after about three, and then you have to wait an hour or so before you get uh, cleared to do more. So if someone could do that, and like I said, just if you, you don't have delete access, just mention me. I try to, for comments, I try to delete them because you can actually delete them. You cannot delete PR review comments, but you can, can delete like regular comments if you're an admin. And so for their comments, I try to delete them. If it, they left a review, I usually just report it unless the author is confused by it. Like if the author says something in response, I'll usually have comments saying that's just a spammer, please ignore. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just message me and so I can close the issue or delete the comment. Does that make sense to everybody? So I do have yes. a doubt, Micah. What was that? Yeah, uh, so I, I do have a doubt. So let's say if I, mm -hmm. Um, if I go ahead and I mentioned to you that this is a spam, do you also would, would like to have an explanation as to why I consider this a spam so that it makes it easier for you? Uh, no, I would just say um, I'm guessing that I will You're recognize it right away <laughs> as, got it, got it. as spam. Um, and so like, mm -hmm. I'll probably still double check at least at first. Um, but if I disagree with you that it's spam or whoever mentions me, if I disagree that it's spam, I'll probably, I'll leave a comment saying, I don't know about this. Um, okay. okay, but I'm I'm guessing like like I said I I've gone through enough of these that at this point it takes me about I don't know, ten seconds to identify if someone as a spammer or not. Yeah, um, I mean, every now yeah. and then they do something mm -hmm. new and clever, and it takes me a little <laughs> bit longer. Like one guy actually had a pro account they were spamming with, meaning they paid GitHub money to spam repositories, and that caught me off guard because that was the first time I saw a pro spam right. Um, I still end up being a pet spammer, I, but I spent a lot more time digging into that one than I do most of them. Uh, but yeah, like I said, most of them I can recognize right away. And so the goal here is to make it so I can, my, my hope is that we can get to a point where I can unsubscribe from GitHub, like, uh, and instead just get mentions. Cause right now I'm watching this repository for all activity. And I think I'm the only person that does that. And so I'm the only person that sees, you know, half the stuff that comes through. Well, this is certainly helpful. It's not only that people who are like one of us who are actively involved in these EIPs repository can uh, like tag you or the other EIP editors to uh, flag these scams, but anyone listening to this call can do that. So thank you so much, Micah, for screen sharing and explaining the process, how it can be actually reported. And just for record, Shishank, I do not have edit access or delete access. So I can also like just for, uh, forward it to EIP editors. So it's better to mention it to EIP editors only. I mean, like make a mention of that as Got of it. now. Yeah. yeah. You, you can also, uh, it might make more sense just to mention and link me like in Ethereum Cat Herders or Ether and D EIP editing channel. Um, that way we don't need to further add more spam on top of their spam to people's PRs and whatnot. That makes sense because it will again increase our GitHub notification. Yeah, I think that would yeah. be better. Yeah, maybe on the Discord server it will be better. Yeah, just want to. Yeah, so just, anyone who notices one, just mention me, and then if things are going smoothly, I will unsubscribe, and be happy. Uh, well, that sounds like a great plan to move ahead. Uh, I just hope that it should not be again spam spamming, <laughs> but uh, I hope that this is going to be very helpful because these people are not just uh, creating spam, but they are ultimately harming the innocent people who believe on them by looking at their GitHub, uh, you know, colors on screen that they are contributed yeah. to some of their repositories. All right, let's move on to the uh, next. Uh, issue listed here, unless anyone has any final comment to add.
Cool. So the next item listed here is discuss and document process to merge EIP bot uh, pull requests. Um, the present EIP bot, uh, it was developed in uh, 2021, thanks to Alita Mo for working on it. Um, I know the EIP editors have helped a lot to improve the process uh, of um, EIP standardization in a year and a half, uh, like in, in the past 18 months. And even at ECH, we are trying to engage more contributors to work on EIP board. As we know that Shashank, uh, um, uh, he has been working with Alita and um, uh, looking into the issues which are reported in EIP bots issues, but we are trying to make the process more uh, community contributor based, like people should be find, uh, finding it very easy to come forward and help us with any issue to make it more manageable. Um, I suppose he has some thoughts uh, on documentation and process that he would like to share. Um, yeah, so I was thinking, so currently uh, I don't find any documentation or process as to how one should be contributing to EIP bot or also how how does the EIP bot even work? Uh, um, so maybe having a documentation in place of the process of contribution and the understanding of how the AIP bot is working at a code level, uh, maybe adding more comments or having or having a general uh, spec for the AIP bot would make sense. Um, so that any dev who wants to contribute to the AIP bot can just hop in and look at a documentation uh, and start contributing. So that improves the process of me or Alita or some other main contributor to the EIP board, not having to be present at all times to communicate and, uh, you know, dispense information, uh, it will become uh, easier for the devs who are trying to contribute uh, uh, from the contribution point of view, if that makes sense. So I will push back slightly on that. Um, with any given project, the act of writing documentation is quite time consuming. And so you have to weigh is the benefit of documentation, does it outweigh the cost of writing it? Um, for some, many projects that definitely outweighs it, like, because you get, you know, 10X, 100X um, effort versus payoff. So if you have some piece of code that's good, likely to be interacted with by hundreds or thousands of developers, then having documentation is critically important because it allows one person to help inform thousands of others. Um, if you have a piece of code that is worked on by two people, um, very often, the act of writing documentation takes far longer than just having those two people talk to each other. Um, and so the thing that I would be curious about before we sink a significant amount of time into documentation is, do we think that the EIP bot is going to attract a significant number of um, contributors and authors, or do we think that it's probably just going to be one or two people? I think that would depend on how much do we want to automate uh, stuff using the IP board, right? Because of th if there are too many tasks being ad being added or being pending on the IP board, then maybe having that documentation or a, maybe a basic documentation in place, not a maybe detailed one, just a basic as to uh, how the IP board is kind of working, like what are the workflows uh, and stuff like that would make sense. Something minimal like contributor guidelines or? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Because yep. maybe, maybe like how to get involved would be a, a very worthwhile section writing um, without going into much technical depth. Uh, sure, sure. Because I think most of the open source projects do have some sort of contribution guidelines, right? So I think that would be a good first step. And do you, I'm assuming you want something more than what's in the readme there that is linked. I was just initially wondering if, if a dev is trying to read and trying to contribute, maybe having this basic understanding of like, okay, what's the code exactly doing, but yeah, that makes sense because it actually takes a lot of time to write the whole documentation. So, uh, yeah, maybe just the contribution guidelines would be sufficient, I suppose. Yeah. So from a quick skim of the read, maybe, maybe just like a, a statement that, you know, it's open to contribute contributions from, from anybody and like that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Well, the idea is here to uh, like decentralize the work. I know uh, today, yesterday, Alita was working on it. Today also she is contributing, but uh, we are trying to decentralize the contribution. And I think uh, this contribution guideline, like uh, what if people uh, find a 
issue, open issue, how they would want to respond to it. Obviously, if they would look into the readme that is already existing, will give an idea, a brief idea of what this uh, repository all about. And it would be just nice to have a small contribution guideline that may not consume a lot of time. So, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, so I, my already shared, so Arita already wrote that contribution guideline, but I'm still not sure as to what exactly EpiBot is doing. Uh, like, when does it trigger? Why does it trigger? What's the end goal of the EpiBot? Or like, what is it currently trying to do? Right, like what's the pipeline of the EpiBot look like? Is what I'm trying to get at. Like, okay. I mean, there is, does, so yeah, right now we, yeah. right now we currently have two bots and that definitely doesn't help with uh, clarity. Actually, I think we have three or four bots technically. Um, I, I can appreciate there being some value in just like having an outline of what the roles the different bots have. Why do we have multiple bots instead of one? And um, what is the general high level process for the bots? That's a, it's a type of documentation that's a little bit easier to write than tr like more formal documentation. That's more just descriptive, yes. high level overview. Um, yeah, I can, that might be a good task for Alita if, if we think we're gonna get multiple editors. Not just that, maybe all the contributors might, might not be available all the time. So tomorrow if I leave or Alita leaves or someone else leaves or, or <laughs> someone just... just wants to join in, yeah. The, the the solution we've had in the past to that problem is just write a new bot. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, is we why have, we have five, five bots. <laughs> well, we have uh, spent a decent amount in the past 18 months on these, uh, like, you know, improving process. If we can improve the process by adding some documentation, like adding some effort in documentation, so we do not have to rewrite the bot again. I, I suppose that would be helpful. For example, yesterday in the EIP uh, editors internship meeting, there was this guy who came up with new proposal or new set of codes, which was again, I believe is a set of improvement in the present EIP bot. But I understand that he may not be very clear about how it actually works. So I obviously have pointed yes. him out to Alita and Shashank, but I, I suppose that it would be useful. Yeah, Shashank, if you have anything on that particular script too. draft are matching to the original EIP one um, um, framework or oh, sorry template and now the now the issue is the the board that Alita wrote is in TypeScript right ultimately it's running on JavaScript so uh, now now another another confusion is should we add should we merge these boards or should we keep the board separate should we add another flow so this just complicates the task of adding new boards so uh, Alita I'm sorry, we are losing you, Shashank. I think we have lost them. Hello. Yeah, you're back. I'm back. Okay. So, uh, so I was saying, yeah. So basically, uh, I and Alita agree on the point that there should be a single code base for the board and we shouldn't be having multiple bots because that just increases the complexity of maintaining all those individual bots. And like, now you have to reach out to the authors of the bot to understand like what's going on and it just becomes too complicated. So having a single bot and a single code base makes sense uh, instead of having multiple bots maybe. I tend to agree with that. I suppose a, like, um, a decent compromise here would be like uh, if Shashank would uh, like to volunteer or like work on the documentation part, look into the process because I know he's trying to get involved with the EIP bot uh, issues more and more. So it would be nice to have him look into the process and documentation that he think might be useful to add over there unless uh, it is like too big of a task and it is like too much of time consuming. 
Oh no, I was actually planning on working on that already. So, um, <laughs> this is one. Wanted... Sorry, we keep losing you, Shashank. But uh, it looks like to me that you are already working on the documentation part. Uh, so, um, maybe we can revisit this particular item in the next meeting and see where we are and what else is required to be added. Yeah, I can see that. I will thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, before we move on to the next item, I see a comment uh, here, which I think we can address it right away about the EAPV. Um, it, it's not a comment. I actually, Micah just shared the link for uh, uh, resources. We had discussed about the uh, placeholder for EAPV in the past meetings, and I was supposed to work with the DevOps team to get the right access. Uh, Luckily, I got a response from Jimmy today, and he did mention that uh, uh, he, he would like to bring it up with the DevOps team and is very much hopeful that uh, this can be moved to the Ethereum repository soon. So that's an update. Sweet. Yeah, I'm happy that at least we are moving in the right direction. All right. Um, uh, anything more on item number two? Okay, I see a comment here. Uh, uh, so I will submit the draft for you guys to check and see if there are any changes has to be made. Mm, yeah, that would be nice. Thank you, Shashank. Moving on to item number three, it's about EIP's insight. It's a monthly report that we share every month uh, on what's going on like on the EIP editing side, I have shared the report for the month of January so far, like up till 12th of January. We have four new proposals added as draft. All these four proposals are of ERC categories. Um, there are two proposals which are moved from draft to review. And one of those is already moved to uh, review to last call. In total, we have three proposals in the last call, EIP 3448, EIP 3607, and EIP 3668. Uh, the deadline is 24th and 25th January. So if anyone has any comment concerns related to these proposals or they want any, any further improvement or any suggestions are there, please look into the proposal and join the discussion to link at Fellowship of Ethereum Magicians so your concerns should be addressed before they uh, finishes their last call deadline. And uh, if there are no like uh, major changes, we hope to see these proposals getting into final status very soon. Other than that, uh, there was this one proposal 2098, which was moved to stagnant by the part, but the author is very much interested to pursue the proposal. I suppose it is an informational proposal and uh, uh, this is brought back to a review status. There is one EIP, one related change, uh, like uh, we have uh, made this small edit to have this consistent documentation of EIPs in EIP one. So EIPs are generally called as EIPs irrespective of their category. So we just try to uh, make sure that the EIP one shows the consistent documentation. There are a couple of final uh, proposals which had minor edits going on. Uh, you can check out the entire uh, EIP improvement proposal in sight for the month of January to take a look of details of the uh, EIPs. That's about it. The next item is EIP editors apprenticeship meeting. Yesterday we had um, this meeting and uh, the recording is made available. Uh, you can find the recording even from the agenda or also it is available on Ethereum Cat Holders YouTube. It's good to see that more um, new people joining in. In the last meeting, there was someone who was interested into ERC related editing. So we hope that uh, these meetings help newcomers to join uh, the community and eventually start contributing in the reviewing process. Uh, 
um, any anything so far, like comment questions? All right, I think the next item is going to be a little interesting. Uh, so last week we had a meeting with uh, William and Trikan, the lead author of EIP 721. Um, that meeting was PEEP and EEP. Uh, so if people are interested to learn about the proposal and some use cases, the recording is available on Ethereum Cat Herders YouTube. After the discussion, he shared some of the concerns that he initially had when the EIP process was evolving. And he listed um, a list of uh, tasks or maybe concerns that he would like the editor's team to look into and if that could be helping in improving the present process. I have added the list in the comment section. Um, I don't know if anyone want to pick up anything specific to discuss. I mean, I was looking into it some of these things I think are already addressed, but yes. Okay, uh, the first one is about the mission statement. Um, it seems like uh, the proposal is now stale um, and closed. Okay, uh, I see the last comment from Micah. Yeah, if you have thoughts. On that? Um, I'm reading it right now to remind myself. This is a very long time ago. I know this is the last minute entry. I should have added this list earlier. Um, we don't have to discuss all of the things today, but uh, I just wanted to share the list. So whatever we can cover today would be nice to have. Um, Regarding mission statements, um, I'm fine with them as like just indicating you know, why why do we do EIPs? Um, I guess that's fine. I mean, the my gen I don't I also don't have like a strong desire for them at the same time. Like it's not something where I'm like, oh yeah, we definitely need a mission statement. It's critical for our success. It's more just if people want a mission statement, sure. Um, like I'm I'm totally fine with the first line in the readme, which just says EIPs are standards. Right, I think a mission statement is very much closer to the problem statement here. Like what problem are you actually trying to solve, which you think can be a standard and this problem is actually being faced by different applications or the uh, you know uh, clients, so. but I'm not sure if uh, there would be uh, like uh, something added to the EIP and if that would be maybe some general consensus and changes to EIP template would be required. Do you have any thoughts on that? Sorry, I got distracted reading this uh, thread. What was the question again? So my understanding is uh, this mission statement should be very close to the problem statement. And if they are trying to mention that, okay, this is the generic problem that other projects or dApps may face, and this is why it should be considered as a standard, then probably it should be added to the EIPs. And if it would be, then we might want to update some of the EIP uh, template, maybe something added. Or... Oh, so I don't think he's suggesting we add a uh, mission statement to each EIP. I think he's saying we add a mission statement to the EIPs repository. Am I misunderstanding that? Like I think he wants a mission statement for like github.com slash EIPs. Well, I think you are right. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's about the readme. That makes sense. And that's where I like, mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with what we have in that opening sentence. Like, I don't feel a need to have more, but if third parties are finding that is not explanatory enough, then that's also okay. Like, I don't mind expanding on it. Sounds fair. Do you have any thoughts or concern on this, Matt? I'm okay with it. I don't think it should go on every EAP though. Yeah, I totally understand that. It was my mistake, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all right, uh, then we can probably update him. Um, and if you would like to add something there, he can always come back and make a pull request. All right. 
going on to the next one uh, rewrite readme and index.md with a focus on our audiences of builders and end users so he obviously suggests that he is willing to uh, take a lead and creating pr Mm. Yeah, please. Um, so I mean, we've we've talked before about how currently the README slash EIP one slash template slash uh, EIPs repository web page slash Ethereum.org all cover the same thing in slightly different ways and with slightly different words, and it's confusing, and it's not clear who the target audience is for each of them. And we've talked about fixing that before, and I would still like to fix that general issue. And I think this falls into that. This is, uh, I believe, more or less this, the same problem where we have the readme and EIP1 and index.html, the kind of could just use being rewritten. Like they've just been mutated over time, over and over and over again, and they just ended up in a unhealthy place. So I'm, I'm not against that one. Uh, if someone wants to go through it, um, the hard part is finding someone who wants to go through and Clean all that up. That makes sense. And uh, as per the um, comment, it looks like he's already willing to create a pull request for that. So I'll communicate that. And maybe when he does, if there is anything to be improved or changed, or if it's just fine, it can be merged. All right. The next one is increased accountability of core EIPs. I mean, to me, it is a little unclear, like how, but I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means. That's a little vague. And same thing with the next one. I'm not sure <laughs> what they mean by the next one. Yeah, the next one I understand is um, it's uh, increased interaction RSS email list. And um, with uh, with the talk, I, I had a feeling that he is looking into that RSS feed to be more active. And if possible, someone can maintain the list of uh, emails who are looking um, for this, you know, RSS feed. I don't know how much it is possible in, in real life. Like, is it really feasible to have this kind of list maintained anywhere? I've, we already have an RSS feed, I believe. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but I think uh, I'm not sure. I I don't. I, I'm not subscribed to that, so I'm not sure if it is still going out. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Did it break? I don't know who maintains it or where it's hosted. I just know it existed at some point. Okay, maybe some research work on this detection can be done if we still find value in maintaining this RSS feeds and emails. Now that there are so many processes evolved and we are trying to provide information on dif uh, different channels. Um, but yeah, I think if people, is, people are interested in having feeds, we can always invite them to update it if it is not being updated. Moving on, the next one is recommend a specific place for discussion that are off topic of EIP repo. That's something different. So far we have been recommending that this is the right place to discuss everything related to EIPs. I'm not sure what does he mean. I mean it's, it's, it's very broad. They mean off topic, like where do people go to talk about COVID <laughs> or like, <laughs> Is there somewhere in between that they're hoping to like what what is the specific scope they're looking for yeah right maybe i can get more clarity from him or i would ask him to maybe join the next meeting or add comments to this um, agenda and we can bring it up next time as well okay. provide up yeah please go ahead i was just agreeing <laughs> thank you uh, the next one is provide platform for EIP discussions. It does allow official discussion outside of our platform, avoid link rot. So I think we have made significant process, uh, progress in the past few months on moving the discussion to Fellowship of Ethereum Magician and making that as an yeah. official discussion forum. So this is, I think, is actually taken care of. Agreed. All right. Um, 
I think that's all from the list. Going back to the agenda items, uh, we have covered almost everything except this last one review action from the previous meetings. So I'm quickly looking into it. And from the last meetings, looks like we have three action items or decisions. Make PRs to call all EIPs, EIPs in the documentation and not ERCs for EIPs, but ERC category. Uh, this has already been merged. Number two was continue discussion to move all discussion to and pre-draft to Ethereum magicians. Yes, we are uh, trying to enforce that, moving all of the EIPs related uh, discussion to link to Fellowship of Ethereum Magician. And the third one is merge Greg's PR for him to receive notification for EIPs. I suppose that is already done. So that's all from the last meeting. And the one I already have updated, uh, Pooja will talk to DevOps and Matt for an appropriate placeholder. Uh, we have shared the information that uh, we received a response and it should be taken care of. That's all from the items listed here. Anyone has to bring up anything? Well, it was a good meeting and uh, we tried to catch up on things that we left last in December and looks like we have some new um, tasks and activities to involve more. I'm really happy with the progress of EIP bot that we are doing. Recently, I noticed the tag that I, I suppose bot is providing, like as soon as a pull request is created, it says that it is about status change, it is about uh, general updates. It, it looks really nice. And uh, yeah, I hope to keep improving the process with the help of this meeting. So people who are listening to these calls, if you have any questions, concerns, reach us, the EIP editors, the cat herders team. We are available on ECH Discord on the EIP editors channel. Share your concerns with us and we'll try to bring it up in the future meetings. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Hope to see you all in two weeks on January 26th. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks.